This is a 1980 Stern nine ball designed by Steve Kirk and um, a really incredible solid state machine, a classic, classic Stern game that is pretty sought after. And uh, I played this game at the uh, Dutch Pinball Association. I really came to love it because it's uh, got a super killer back glass here, as you see. I've always wanted to get like a t-shirt with this on it. And um, the game is, uh, it's got a pretty simple rule set, but it's really uh, tough. It's hard as nails. Um, this is the play field that was in the machine when I got it. Now, um, when I bought this game, I posted on Pinside about it, and somebody saw the post and said, hey, you've got a really terrific play field there on that nine ball. Because I guess the nine balls are really known for the play fields wearing out right around here, around the balls, and then up here in the lock area. You can see mine has a little bit of wear here. Um, anyway, some of these, they get completely blown out, where, where all this artwork is missing, even up to the wizard. So this is, uh, this is original. I haven't done any touch-ups to this. Now, somebody has repainted here in the past. They've repainted this area here, shoot again. And um, this guy texted me on Pinside and told me, he's like, hey, um, they're trying to reproduce Nine Ball. They want to, they want to, um, there's a couple companies. There's CPR in Canada, and there's Merco Reproduction Playfields here in Germany. So I got a hold of Merco and I said, hey, look, I've got a play field. I got a, a nine ball here with a really good play field. Took, sent him some pictures. And, um, and believe it or not, before I ever even played the game even one time, I totally stripped this machine down and I did the first uh, play field swap I'd ever done. I did this to, yeah, to preserve this game uh, for, for the rest of for the rest of the, the pin siders out there and the rest of the collectors around the world. So Merco took that play field and they, uh, they scanned it and they digitally uh, made some corrections and, and fixes. Um, the, the text down here that it had been repainted before um, was not exactly accurate. There's a couple little minor things in the play field, uh, but they reproduced this play field. And now you can buy a uh, nine ball reproduction play field from Merco Playfields here in Germany. And um, and then the uh, back glass itself, when I got the game, the back glass had some some cracking in the paint, um, pretty common with some of these old back glasses. And I actually got this reproduction from CPR in Canada. I totally repainted the sides and um, yeah, kind of made a stencil and then repainted it. You know, other than that, it's got the, um, still got the the stern coin door with the illuminated mark symbols. I really like this, you know, for the, you know, German marks here. But you can see the bottom of the play field here. Um, you know, um, you know, again, this is my first uh, play field swap, and I learned a lot. And there's some things that I would do differently next time. Um, I took the wiring harness off and I put it in a dishwasher, uh, which was recommended to me um, on pin side. And that while that did work. The unintended consequence was that it created a lot of corrosion in all the light sockets. And then I ended up having to go back after, after I had already repopulated everything and track down and trace down so many problems with the GI um, and, and the, um, the controlled lamps as well. You can see I replaced a lot of the light sockets afterwards, but there are still a lot of, uh, a lot of the GI is still stock. A bunch of them I've replaced. I haven't replaced them all yet. You can see that these circuit boards, this is an upgrade. Initially, there were these metal panels here, and each, uh, the metal panel had all these uh, light sockets on there, and those things would get loose, and, uh, and, and they wouldn't work. So you can get this uh, board here uh, for a couple bucks, and then you solder the wires onto it, and then you use the same kind of twin twist sockets that you'd find in a lot of other machines, and it makes it so easy, uh, and you don't have to worry about things not working on you. All the drop uh, target banks apart. There's three different drop target banks in this game. Actually, four if you include the small one in the back here. And took those apart and rebuilt them. And um, so far, you know, the game is uh, it's it's fairly reliable. I, I have had some issues, like I said, with it not starting properly. I do need to track that down. Uh, even today, it was giving me a little bit of problems. Anyway, let me put the uh, camera down here. I'll get the playfield down, and we'll look behind the back glass. Power supply slash driver board, I've recapped it. And here's the MPU. And it does have an NV RAM installed in place of the battery that was originally here. All in all, um, you know, these sterns have these little small 
um, connectors with these really fine pins. I haven't had any issues with these. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm looking around and it doesn't appear that I had to replace any of the connectors. I did have to replace the connectors on the rectifier board that was down there underneath the play field. I don't know if you saw that. But um, beyond that, um, everything here was fine. Yeah, we'll put the play field uh, uh, backlash back in and uh, yeah, we'll talk about the gameplay. So the object of the game is um, to knock down the targets, the nine ball targets here, in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the last one, uh, nine, you actually knock down. Um, basically, when you knock these all down, then it will reset them. And then the nine will be flashing and the, and the light will strobe down like this. And then you have to hit the target that's flashing at the time. And that gives you the nine. Uh, when you knock down the nine ball, a couple things happen. If you have a ball that's up here in the lock, that's trapped in the lock, it'll release those balls. Um, it also lights your super bonus for the next ball. You'll get the super bonus right off the bat if you complete the nine ball. Um, let's see, you've got a play field. And, and of course, when you knock down your targets here, it's going to illuminate on the play field, one, two, three, all the way up. Um, so this is your uh, end of ball bonus times a thousand. And then you can multiply that. Um, you can get a play field multiplier. Um, to 2x, then to 3x, then to 4x, then to 5x, then to 6x, then to 7x, then, yeah, I guess 7x is the most. And the way that you increase that is by hitting down the drop target banks up here. If you knock the drop target bank down, um, both of them, then you'll increase your playfield multiplier. Make sure I got all the rules straight. Um, been a while since I played it. Up here, you've got your uh, horseshoe loop here, and this is quite tricky because you hit that thing and that ball comes back pretty fast, and a lot of times it, it goes down for a center drain. You do have a center post here, which is kind of a trademark from Steve Kirk, uh, who designed this game. And uh, the center post is pretty good on this machine. Um, I do still lose it quite a bit off that center post, uh, so it's not always a gimme. There is a drop target here that's currently sitting down. Um, when you go through this horseshoe, you'll, um, I think it starts out at 10,000. When you go through the horseshoe, it'll go up to 20, then 30, then 40, and then 173,000. I had no idea why it's that number. Just some arbitrary number, I guess, that they picked. But basically, if you build this up and then you hit that drop target, you get the, you get that point value. But when you try to shoot, uh, for this horseshoe, a lot of times you'll hit this drop target and drop it down, which awards you whatever you've built up here. And, sends you back to the beginning again. So it's tough to get it to 173. And then if you get it to 173, inevitably sometimes you go to shoot for the drop target and you accidentally hit the horseshoe, which takes it back to 10 again. So it's just uh, tricky there. It's got a great spinner. Uh, the spinner is actually exposed and open. It's not supported here on this side. Uh, it's a really cool spinner and mine's lubed up pretty well. So uh, the uh, spinner scores 100, but you can increase the value of the spinner by a couple ways. One is by um, hitting the, let me see. If you hit this target up here on the launch, it'll advance it all the way to the top value like it shows. Um, and then what is the other way? What is the other way? Um, I think the other way is to drop the drop targets. I can't quite remember at the moment. But you build this up and if it's at nine, 900 to spin, when you hit that spinner with the ball, you'll get 900 to spin until that thing stops spinning and then it resets itself all the way to 100 again. So when you build it up, you want to build it up and then you want to hit it and you want to nail it and you want to keep nailing it because it'll time out and you'll see that when I play. Um, up here there's a lock and um, if you shoot it up here and it drops into the lock hole, it'll actually score whatever targets are still up at the time. So you'll get points for all those targets that were sitting up. Uh, and then it'll kick the ball out. Once you get it past uh, the five ball, if you put it up here, it actually locks the ball in place and gives you another ball. Uh, and you can actually get a multi-ball in the game, although the multi-ball is really not very important. There's not much you can really do in the multi-ball. Um, so it's not really something to shoot for. Plus, it's really difficult to get it into this lock anyway. You pretty much have to carry them off the pop bumper, or sometimes I'm able to shoot from this left flipper up here and bounce here and then go over and get it into that. But it's not very repeatable. It's pretty tough. So anyway, that's enough talking. I'm going to put the camera on the tripod and get this thing uh, fired up and let's play us some nine ball.
ball two here. And uh, ball two. Six. Target six. Pretty tough right there on the other side of that uh, post. Now we gotta knock down the target where the light is flashing. I think that'll do it. out our bonus multiplier because we got the nine ball so now we want to get the bonus multiplier it's at 4x now and um, see if we can get it
knock down all that uh, that bonus there that I got. It's up to 4x. I think I'm gonna get over a million. Oh no! What happened? <laughs> oh boy. Nine ball was not happy with that score. <laughs> you saw it. It totally crashed. Oh man. Well, I obviously have some work to do on this game. I don't know what's going on, but uh, it's got some gremlins. So, so there you go, folks. Nine ball. It's a great, great classic uh, Stern machine. Happy to have it in the collection. So, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll uh, keep moving through the collection. i got a bunch more machines, machines to talk about. So I've been dragging my feet on this one. I'm glad I got it done. And uh, check out the next video coming soon. Take it easy.